Hello and welcome everyone to Office Hours with Intruder. Um, the aim of today's session is to get you set up properly in the Intruder portal, give you a whistle stop tour of the platform. And along with that, we'll be looking at the improvements we've made to Intruder in Q1, along with a very exciting sneak peek of what's to come in Q2. So some quick housekeeping just before we get started. You can ask any questions at any point using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be answering all of those questions at the end. If you don't get the chance to answer your question, don't worry, we'll be following up directly. And if you have any additional questions after the webinar, please feel free to use the chat box feature in the portal. You'll also receive a link to this recording. So don't worry if you miss something, you can watch it back if you need to. OK, let's do some introductions. So my name is Dara uh, and I work in product marketing here at Intruder. And I suppose what that means is that I help Andy and the product team show off all the amazing features that they build to our customers and to the world. And joining me today are Joe Haig, our Senior Technical Support Specialist, and Andy Hornigold, our VP of Product, who I'll let introduce themselves. Thanks, Dara. Yes, so uh, my name is Joe. You may have spoken to me before if you've ever spoken to the support team, but um, I'm here to sort of take you through a demo of the platform, help with any questions you might have, and introduce myself. And we've also got Andy as well. Yeah, hi everybody. So my name is Andy. I'm the VP of Product at Intruder, as Dara has so kindly introduced. Um, I'm here to make the product as awesome as possible, make sure we're solving as many of the problems that you have as possible. Um, my background is pretty predominantly offensive security, so um, red teaming, and I'm trying to bring as much of that domain knowledge into the product as possible so that you don't have to worry about it. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, before we move on, I just want to give everyone a very quick reminder of how Intruder is here to help. So we built Intruder because, as I'm sure you all know, cybersecurity tools are typically pretty complex and they can be hard to use. And the goal of Intruder is to make vulnerability management as easy as possible without compromising security. So you get all of the protection without any of the complexity. Um, we're also here to help you scale and automate your vulnerability management program demonstrate security compliance, and then just keep an eye on your attack surface, showing you when, where, and how your company is vulnerable, um, and then give you the chance to prioritize what matters most and um, go about fixing those things. So in today's session, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start with a product update where Andy will go through all of the features and improvements we've made in Q1. We'll then jump into a demo with Joe, where we will look at key features in the platform um, and help you get set up correctly so that you're, you can start scanning all your assets as effectively as possible. Um, and then we'll take a look ahead at Q2, where Andy's going to give everyone a sneak peek of the product roadmap, which I'm very excited about. Um, finally, we'll be moving on to Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So as I said, keep your questions coming and we'll answer them at the end. And yeah, I think we're ready to go. So without further ado, I'll pass you to Andy for the product update. Thanks, Dara. Um, so over the last quarter, we've had a bunch of things going on in the background. Um, the product team have been working hard to try and resolve some of the uh, problems and, and issues that you have when it comes to managing vulnerability management or vulnerabilities within your organization. So. One of the first things that we started working on, we released uh, an update at the end of last year, which was um, we improved our um, web, app web application scanning engine under the hood. Um, and at the beginning of uh, this year, we released a new spider, which allows us to crawl and find additional pages within your web applications uh, more effectively. So what we were looking for there is originally we supported web applications um, that were the traditional sense of web applications. So apps that were built um, with uh, request and response, so multi-page apps. Um, we had some difficulty working with single page applications, which I'm sure if you're involved in application development, um, single page apps are the modern way of, of developing um, web applications. So scanners traditionally have a bit of a difficulty handling single page applications, and that's because they're extremely JavaScript heavy. So um, we've improved our spidering. Um, and what we're finding is we're actually increasing the coverage um, for our web application scanner pretty considerably. We've increased the number of issues that the scanner can now find by about 50% uh, when people go through their trial window. 
Um, so that's the first part with application scanning is now giving us greater coverage of single page apps. Um, second side of things is um, the we've tried to expand on um, giving you the information you need to make sure you're gaining the most coverage of your attack surface. So when I talk about attack surface, I mean anything that an attacker can find that's exposed to the internet that they can then find vulnerabilities in, exploit to try and uh, compromise your um, your organization and gain access to your data. So um, the way we've done that is um, two things that are brand new. One is our um, AWS API discovery techniques. So if you have an AWS integration with Intruder, um, what you'll see now is that any internet facing IP address or host name that is hosted within AWS and has an API associated with it. Um, you'll see a little icon that I'm sure Joe will um, demonstrate in, in the demo that shows you that that target is um, an API target. And if you want to increase your coverage of that asset, so if you want to find as many vulnerabilities as possible within that API, you can upload the schema to for that API to Intruder and will spider every single endpoint within that API, um, helping you increase your coverage. The other side of that as well is when you add a target to Intruder now, either through our cloud integrations or manually, um, we will do a quick check um, as soon as that's added to find um, login pages that exist within those targets. So what that means is you'll be able to very quickly identify which of your targets are web applications and which of those web applications have a login page. Um, so that if you want to scan behind that login page, you just know you know now that you need to add an authentication to be able to do that. So we're making it significantly easier for you to manage your entire attack surface and make sure you're getting the most coverage possible with Intruder. Um, the reason we do that is because the things you don't know are the things that usually end up in a compromise happening or a breach occurring. So we're trying to give you that information and guide you to a solution as easily as possible. Final point is um, I've touched on our cloud integrations. So previously we had uh, the ability for people to add AWS accounts. Um, we didn't integrate at the organization level within AWS. So for those of you that know, you have individual accounts within AWS and those are the, the things you log into. But AWS introduced organization years ago, um, which can have multiple accounts assigned to it. So what we do now is we allow you to add that in organization level into Intruder. And every time a new account is added to that organization, it can be included into Intruder automatically. And then any of the internet facing assets within that account can also be automatically scanned. So one of the key principles for um, what we do at Intruder is reducing the window of opportunity for an attacker to get into your um, attack surface and in, into your data. And one of the ways we do that is by scanning when something changes within your attack surface. So when that new account is added and when those new assets come online and are exposed to the internet, you'll know if there's any vulnerabilities in there that need to be addressed as quickly as possible. Um, I think that's it from me. So those are the things that we've predominantly worked on over the last quarter. Um, I'm going to hand over to Joe now to give you a little bit of a demo of what that looks like in the portal. So Joe, over to you. Thank you very much, Andy. Perfect. I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of the most important things you need to take a look at when you first get going. So um, here I am starting on the dashboard. You can see an overview of your current account. So this account, as you um, can see, has, has already been running for a little bit. We've got some demo data in there. So um, this gives you a bit of insight what it could look like after a few scans have been run. So at the top here, you can see your overall threat level. So that's an uh, an evaluation of your current exposure sort of um, rating across all of your targets that have been added to the portal. So um, that will go either critical, high, medium or low or be good, it'd be green. Um, and then obviously the color of that will sort of indicate um, how your, your current exposure looks. Um, on the right of that, you have your issues. So this is a current count of all the different issues that are present across your targets on the portal. Um, I also like to flag this checks available section here. So you can see a, a large number of checks are available on this account here. So um, this is a premium account. So you've got 170,000, nearly 170,100 checks. And you've also got here um, a nice little 
flag of the new checks that have been added in the last 90 days as well. So you can see that we're continuously adding new um, things as new uh, vulnerabilities emerge and things like that. So that's pretty cool to see. Underneath there, you have got a, a graph showing the average time to fix issues. So there's uh, preset sort of goals in there. So you've got seven days for critical, 30 days for high, et cetera. And it sort of shows you if your remediation efforts are within that goal, or perhaps they're slightly over and how we can, um, you know, what you need to focus on in, in that front. Um, over here, you've got the cyber hygiene score. So the cyber hygiene score, rather than being a point in time evaluation, is more of a an evaluation over time. So from the point in which an issue is flagged, how long is it taking you to fix that? Are there any vulnerabilities that are still present that perhaps should be resolved? Um, and resolving critical issues, for example, as it says here, um, will you know improve that rating. Um, on that point, you've also got underneath the prominent issue. So this is similar to the one above um, in the sense that you your efforts to remediate this one issue will have the greatest effect on your cyber hygiene score. And that's because perhaps that prominent issue has been present on the account for a long period of time, or um, it's something that is, you know, a critical and, and you know, needs some effort on that one. Um, underneath that, you've got the time to fix issues by severity. So again, some of the little um, graphical display of the data that's um, present in the portal. And then finally, on the right hand side here, you have an activity feed. So this is a great way of seeing all of the activity that has been present throughout um, the last seven days. And then if you scroll down, it goes even further. So um, in the last 30 days, for example, at the bottom. So that's going to highlight new scans that have run, emerging threat scans, um, issues that have been resolved or found, new network services, updates, things like that, um, which is a bit of a, a way of getting at a glance look at anything that's happened throughout the um, you know, the last few days or month or so on your account. So on the left hand side, I've gone down to the targets tab. This is your next little page, and this is where you probably want to start. So on this page, you can click the yellow add target button, and that will uh, prompt you to select from one of the four different types of targets that are present here. So you've got your uh, sort of external targets, so either infrastructure targets or web application targets. Both of these adding at this point will um, result in a different type of check running afterwards. So you get your infrastructure checks um, if you select the top option. And then if you select the web application, you're going to get those infrastructure checks plus web application checks as well. So you get the benefit of having both of these combined. Um, the second option here, internal targets. So we do run agent-based scanning on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS devices. So this is a nice and simple um, you know, instructions to go through and um, adding those targets to your portal. And finally, on the bottom here, you can see, um, similar to what Andy alluded to, we've got some a a a AWS, in a I'll speak, sorry, an AWS integration, as well as a GCP and Azure integration as well. So we've got the options to um, bring in all of your assets, any externally facing assets on any of those three cloud providers here. So, um, as you can see, this account has a few targets on here. Um, one of the things that Andy mentioned was that um, sort of API flag here. So um, if any of the targets are do have that detected on it, that will be flagged. And then once you've added an API, you can see, um, you know, you can filter these targets here. So when you've added an API schema, you can see this little um, icon next to it. All we need to do there is click onto that target um, and then you can sort of see any issues that are present on the target as well as modifying that API here. So an overview of this page on the left hand side, you have got all of the different filters that are present um, and then you can use these. So underneath the alert section, for example, it said um, has a login page as well. You could use this to sort of make the most of that feature that's been mentioned before. Um, also, you can then use this page to tag any specific assets. So tagging is a way of um, enabling you to have greater control of the assets on your that you're on your account in the sense that you can group them together and scan by that um, tag or run reports uh, based on that tag, schedule scans based on that tag and that type of thing as well. You've also got the option to, to perform um, other actions here. So you can see add authentications, add schema files, um, as well as exporting target lists and things like that. So I'm going to click into a specific asset. Um, so if I, for example, I'm just going to go back to the targets page. Let's click on um, this target here. So uh, once this page is loaded, all you can see on the left, on the, the first section here, you've selected the issues tab. You can see all of the different issues that have been detected in the most recent scan. You can see here, you know, snoozing, which I'm going to go over in a moment. Um, but this enables you a target specific view of all of the issues that are present. 
You've also got the advisories tab. So for those on uh, the premium plans or higher, you've got the option here to, to view anything detected by the manual work um, of our security team. And then the two tabs here, authentications and APIs. So authentications is something that enables um, us to, to scan this target from both the infrastructure level, but then also go in a bit further detail and go behind that login page and find any vulnerabilities that might lie on, might lie on pages there. APIs tab, again, as I mentioned before, ability to add an API schema, um, open API Swagger files here. This services tab is a great way of seeing any ports that are open and you can also view a screenshot of whatever it might be that's running on that specific port as well as um, sort of service enumeration details there. And then just like we saw on the dashboard, you have an activity feed here that is specific to this target. And this location as well is highlighting where that asset is actually located. Um, so that's pretty helpful to know, especially if you've got a large number of assets on your account. And I can also highlight here, you've got uh, this tag. So I've tagged this target with Paris. You can also add uh, new tags here or select from the pre-existing ones. So that is a target detail view. You've also got um, on the targets page, a licenses tab. So this provides you an overview of all of the, the licenses you might have. So infrastructure and application, um, and then some important information about how many licensed targets and unlicensed targets you might have, as well as being able to easily add new targets if you contact sales here um, or add that automatically um, on the portal, as well as adding authentications and API schemas. And then these options allow you to filter through um, the type of target and stages. So active and responsive as well as licensed or unlicensed. The next little tab along is called Cloud Assets, and this is where we can look at those um, integrations that we mentioned, so AWS, GCP, or Azure. So um, if I'm adding a cloud asset, for example, AWS, you have account or organization, um, and you can add, you know, once you've added that integration on AWS, that's going to come up on this page. And all of the targets that have been detected that are externally facing on the cloud environment will appear on this list. You've got a number of options. So if you press the settings cog in the top right hand corner, you've got options here, um, syncing and scanning options and tagging options. Um, so this top option just literally brings in the assets um, and then adds them to the Intruder portal. So it makes it super, super simple. You've also got the option here to add a little selective sync rule. So perhaps you only want things that are in a specific region or have a specific instance ID. You can use this um, functionality to add that filter there. And then you've also got that option below to automatically scan. So this goes an additional level to just importing. It's going to bring them in, then it's going to run a scan as well. So um, again, as Andy mentioned, we're trying to make that gap between being able to know what's available and know what's exposed and, and any finding of vulnerabilities as small as possible. So this uh, every single time we it, perform a cloud bot sync, that's going to um, run a scan straight away and any new assets. And it also enables you to make, be aware of anything new that might have spun up and deleted as well, because you'll be able to configure alerts, um, which I'll go over in, in a moment. The next section here is just to configure tags, so you can import AWS tags straight into the Intruder portal. So um, pretty handy. So you can see here, this has been tagged with uh, Portal 3, and this little AWS logo highlights that it is a tag from the cloud provider. Back to the targets page, your last um, tab is the tags tab so this is tag management all right so you basically got the option here to add new tags edit the current ones or delete them perfect okay so onto the scans page you've added all of your assets you need to to know about now we need to kick off a scan it's super simple to do that you can press the orange or the yellow scan now button in the top right pop in the targets um, either by tag or by target you can tick as many as you as you need add a little name in there um, you can also configure some advanced settings and then hit the start scan button. That is now going to kick off a scan that will come up in the in progress section at the top. And once it's completed, it will move down here. OK, so once moved to that section, you can see um, new issues. So those are things that have been found in this scan that were not previously present, as well as any issues um, that were previously detected and are still not um, remediated under the prior issues section. And then once you've clicked on this, it's going to provide you greater detail on the right hand side. So uh, bespoke written by our security team, a description of the issue and then remediation advice as well to make it super, super simple. If you need further information, there's always the scanner output as well. So this is going to give you some information um, on the issue. And you can also download that as well, which is going to be super helpful for, 
finding all the information you need about a specific vulnerability. Once you've uh, once you've gone ahead and you've performed all of the, the checks you're in to make sure that this has been fixed, um, you can then find any further detail on that issue we're from the issues page and hit the rescan button here. So I've just found this issue was present on that asset um, under that scan. I'm then going to hit that rescan button and then it's going to perform a check to make sure that whatever you've done to remediate the problem has indeed remediated it. And that's going to come back as either pass or fail and you can go from there. Um, perhaps if it's something that has been found and you know you're aware of it and it, it might be needed and you need to snooze the issue because you know that's something that you're aware of, um, then you do have the option to do that here. So you've got the snooze occurrence or snooze, snooze issue buttons here. So <clears throat> this first line, if I hit the snooze occurrence here, I can choose from the three reasons um, and then provide some further details for my team to know about um, in there. Once that's been done, it's going to move across to that snooze tab here. And then you can see um, your team's reasoning as well. So you can view the details. Um, like, for example, this is running an old version and that we know about that on that page. Um, you also see we have um, attack surface flags next to um, specific issues. So that's um, a way of us making sure you're aware of anything that affects your attack surface. So again, another one of them things that we like to, to make as easy as possible, um, highlighting issues that are, are super important to you as well. And we're going to go over this again um, in a bit more detail in a moment, but you can also send to a number of different platforms as part of integrations options. So we've got Jira here or Zero DevOps, um, and obviously there's, there's a number of other ones which we're going to touch upon. Once you've done all that activity, that issue is then moved across to your fix tab, and you can see the date in which it's been fixed as well. So you can see we've fixed 150 issues, which is a, a great effort. So you can see and, and marvel in your amazing efforts across your team as well in that tab. Um, finally, I'd like to just highlight the noise tab. So um, again, one of the things that Dara mentioned right at the beginning, we help to make it as simple as possible, taking out all that complexity. So this is stuff that it does not require any action on your end. We don't bother worrying you about this type of stuff because it's just filtered. It's moved out of your view. So you don't have to worry about it um, as it's not actionable. And then um, finally, the view all checks button at the top. So if, for example, you're interested in, do you check me for X or do you have a specific check for this uh, CVE? You can search through all of that um, information on that checks page. So it's accessible from the dashboard by hitting that checks icon or um, the page we just um, originated from there. And you can search um, all of that. So authenticated for those web apps that you've added authentication to external internal checks. Uh, the next tab is the reports tab. So our reports tab has two main sections to it, analytics and scan reports. So the analytics is a very graphical display of, um, it includes some of those things that are present on the dashboard, but also some other great insights into the account and the assets that might be present on there as well. Um, you can filter the date range and you can see things like new issues. Um, is this greater than the same period um, before? So I've selected the 24th of March to the 24th of April, but it's saying between February and March of the same period of time. And now I've got more new issues than did I did previously, things like that. Um, days between scans, so just making sure that you know we're evaluating in, in enough high enough frequency. Um, your next tab here is scan reports. So this is where we can download PDF or CSV for uh, reports, full reports based on either on scan or a point in time. Um, once we've retrieved that, you know you can use that maybe for your compliance purposes, or you can use that to share with with your teams internally. Um, PDF report contains all the details that you might need for that. The next tab along the left hand side is the network tab. So this is going to show you all the information that is resulting from your um, network scans that have been run on the targets present in your account. And again, you can filter across here by specific targets, tags, IPs, um, as well as things like is the target unresponsive or is it responsive to so live um, and then ports. So, you know, Am I interested only in assets that have port 443 exposed? Um, if you've got a, num a large number of targets, it can sometimes be a bit difficult to know what something is. That's why we like to include this screenshot. So um, that's going to enable you to be like, ah, that's what that is. Next next image, ah, okay, so I now know, you know what is running on that particular port. Maybe you want to close it off so you um, don't leave your, your assets exposed and you don't know about it. This is a great place to look. <clears throat> 
And I mentioned earlier um, integrations. We do have an integrations page and that highlights all of the numbers, number of different integrations. So obviously those I mentioned, AWS, Azure um, and GCP as well, but you've also got um, a number of issue tracking um, platforms. So Azure DevOps, GitHub, GitLab, um, Jira, ServiceNow, as well as alerting so Slack and Teams and compliance so Drata, Manta. We've also got Zapier as well, so you can um, you know connect to other popular tools through Zapier. And we all are always also looking for feedback. So if you are looking for anything um, new, please feel free to request an integration or head across to our product um, feature request page. You can pop anything in there that you might be interested in. Our product team really value that type of feedback as well. Um, and finally, the settings page. So you can see there sort of all of the different people that are present in your accounts, as well as configuring those email notifications. So I touched upon this earlier, um, network emails. So you can get emails either daily, weekly, based on when um, anything changes on your attack surface, as well as things like cloud activity. So again, thing I mentioned right at the beginning, um, you know, do you have perhaps new cloud assets being spun up that you don't know about? This is going to make you aware of it. Um, and then finally, the emerging threat scans. So um, that's part of our scans page, you, uh, the second tab along there, so just here. Emerging threat scans, they are um, basically smaller scans that run before a fun, full vulnerability scan is kicked off on any new and emerging threats that might be present. So um, again, cutting the time uh, between you being aware of something, so it makes that even quicker. Um, so you can also configure the, the settings for that there. Um, so thank you to Andy and Joe again for, for all your expertise and thank you for everyone for joining us. We do run this webinar every quarter, um, but as mentioned, you will get your recording and if there is anything that's uh, urgent or that you want to get some feedback on, um, do please free, feel free sorry, to submit them to contact at intruder.io, it's on the screen there, or um, again via the chat button in portal. But yeah, that's it for today. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll hopefully see you all again very soon.